is Lord. Cause you're the one I totally rely on. Cause people change like the seasons, but you, you have never let me down. You're always with me. Keep me on the straight path. Your mercy out of ways your wrath. Keep me with your righteous company. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, welcome to a new live episode of our program, The Straight Path. Thank you so much for being with us here this evening. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this next hour an hour of His remembrance, an hour of seeking His forgiveness, and an hour of coming closer to Him ta'ala through the things that we say here, the things that we talk about, and more importantly, of course, the things that we implement after we talk here this evening. This program, my dear brothers and sisters, is called The Straight Path because there's only one straight path. The path of Islam, as siratul mustaqim, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about it in the very first surah that we see in the Mus'haf, in the Quran, Surah Al-Fatiha. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as always to keep us all on the straight path and to bless the entire Muslim Ummah, no matter where this Muslim lives in any part of this globe, mashallah, we have more than 1 billion Muslims. 1.5 billion Muslims, that's the estimate for the entire Muslim population around the world. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every single one of them on the individual level and also on the level of the entire Ummah and to unite the hearts of the Muslims to make us all on the straight path in this life and also on the straight path on the Day of Judgment ta'ala so that we can enter Jannah with our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This evening, my dear brothers and sisters, we have a very interesting program for you and a great reminder that we're going to be talking about more, more in the second and third segment, inshallah. And we're going to be specifically discussing the idea of judging, judging other people. And is it really our role as individuals to judge others? And do we often judge people? And why do some people judge other people? Why do we judge other people? What are the causes behind it? What does Islam say about judging other people? What does the Quran say? What does the Sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, say? What are some of the examples of uh, people who have judged other people before? How can this be a detriment to our Muslim society as a whole? And how can we solve it? How can we fix it? How can we avoid it? How can we become of those people who help guide other people instead of simply judging them? Because really that is the easy thing to just judge someone. We're going to be talking about that inshallah, but before that inshallah, my dear brothers and sisters, I'd like to, uh, as always, discuss with you some current events that are happening in the Muslim Ummah. Obviously, there are many, many things that are happening around the world, but there is one thing that I would like to talk about. Uh, not really, you know, specifically in a Muslim country, even though there are Muslims living there, the Philippines, but it is something that definitely has devastated humanity in the past few days or week or a couple weeks. We can say we're talking about the typhoon that happened in the Philippines. Of course, my dear brothers and sisters, as you're going to be seeing in, in the video coming up right now, there it is. We're talking about great destruction that happened there. And subhanAllah, there are many lessons to learn. The first lesson that comes to my mind, honestly, uh, you know, that is out of the ordinary, is uh, look at this, look at this. The human being thinks so much of himself, he thinks that he can do so much, that we are in the 21st century, that science has advanced so much, that we can beat, you know, uh, we can beat whatever we, we want to beat, and there comes a typhoon, you know, simply water that, um, you know, takes the lives of so many people. An estimated, last time I heard, more than 3,000 people have been confirmed dead because of this typhoon. A great devastation, as you can see, my dear brothers and sisters. And subhanAllah, I mean, why would a person, the human being, why would he become so arrogant? We have people in the world who are atheists, people, you know, who don't believe in God, people who are on false religions, who claim, you know, that, oh, I don't need God because... I have, uh, you know, um, I don't know, I have, I have went through so much in life and, and science has advanced and all of these things. Look at the advancement. 
that when it strikes, it strikes, no matter where a person is. Some of those people were residents living there. Some of those people were, some of the people there were visitors. Some were tourists. And subhanAllah, when it strikes, it strikes. And uh, we ask Allah to make uh, the lives of those who have survived easier, to guide them to the deen of Islam, to make this a reminder for them to come back on the straight path. And uh, to help um, all those who are in dire need right now. See my dear brothers and sisters, another very important lesson that we can learn from this is that in just an instant, so many lives can be lost. In just an instant. So, uh, you know, no matter how tough things are around the world or how easy they are for some people, uh, you know, a natural disaster can come in an instant. It can, it can take thousands of people away. And who knows, maybe the next time something like this hits, it'll be hitting in your neighborhood. Uh, we're not immune to, to these types of things. Uh, you know, because I really believe that every single part of the world has some sort of natural disaster that is, uh, you know, affecting it. On some parts of the world, it's an earthquake. Some parts of the world, uh, it is a hurricane. Other parts, it's a typhoon. Part, some other parts, it's a tsunami. Some other parts, it's wildfires in the forests. Whatever the situation may be, in other parts of the world, it's a lot of snow and, uh, you know, that causes disasters. I really believe that in every single part of the world, there is a natural disaster that can happen at any time. And one of the reasons of that is that we should not stray away from the straight path. We should not think that, oh, we have a long life to live, or I live, you know, in such and such type of building that's, that's going to be, uh, you know, resistant to earthquakes or whatever the situation may be. You may be living in a building that's really made, you know, to resist earthquakes, but the moment the earthquake happens, you're on the street somewhere. You never know. You never know what the situation may be. So let's take these things, my dear brothers and sisters, that we see on the news, these very sad events. Let's take them as reminders for ourselves and for the entire Muslim Ummah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes, He can erase this entire world in an instant. And we have to be understanding of our true worth. We're, we're nothing, really. I can't even say we're this small. We're technically nothing. Because subhanAllah, the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest power. And our power, no matter how great we think it is, or no matter how great it advances through science or whatever, it's going to be very, very, very minute. That was a short reminder about something that happened. We all heard about it in the news. We all saw the footage. But how many of us contemplated about it? I hope that we do right now, inshallah. All right, my dear brothers and sisters, let's move on to uh, the next thing that we have. As always, a weekly social media segment where we collect quotes from famous scholars and callers on Facebook. And we share them with you for our benefit. Go ahead and take a look. Sheikh Asim Luqman Al Hakim, you will not be able to give on the day of judgment a single good deed to your father, mother, wife, or children, though you are willing. However, those you have wronged will take from your good deeds on the day of judgment forcefully, whether you like it or not. Abstain from backbiting others, seek forgiveness from others, and cleanse your heart before judgment day. Sister Yasmin Mujahid, be a person of principle, treat all people well, regardless of how they treat you. Mufti Ismail Mink, there are many ways of doing good, so never think that you are the only one who does good. Appreciate the good work by others. Dr. Bilal Phillips, complaining to Allah is acceptable. We should stay away from complaining to people who cannot do anything for us. When we complain to people, we're just looking for sympathy. Sheikh Sa'ad Taslim The only sins that will truly doom you are the ones from which you do not repent. Ustaz Norman Ali Khan Islam does not demand the elimination of culture diversity. It simply seeks to rid cultures of unjust and immoral practices. Sheikh Abdul Bari Yahya. Life is not a video game. You can't start over when you die. 
MashaAllah, great reminders by these scholars and callers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward them and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it a benefit. And I would encourage you, if you haven't already done so, as I say every week, to go ahead and uh, you know like their pages, uh, subscribe uh, to their YouTube channels and uh, follow them on Twitter. Uh, you'll get a lot of great benefit inshallah f from them throughout the week. We do give you one quote per week from some of these scholars and callers, but you can definitely get a lot more uh, if you uh, join them on social media sites. Let's make social media uh, you know, something of benefit, something that will benefit us as individuals, and at the same time we can benefit others by sharing you know, some of these beautiful uh, uh, status updates on our Facebook and our Twitter accounts inshallah ta'ala. All right, my dear brothers and sisters, when we come back, inshallah, as we mentioned earlier in the program, we're going to be talking about a very important subject, judging others. How do we judge others? Why do we judge others? And is this really an Islamic practice? Why should we avoid it? Really, how can we overcoming, overcome this situation, inshallah, uh, ta'ala, when we come back from this short break. We're going to be taking a break in just a moment, inshallah. But I want to tell you, we're going to be joined by a very special guest in the next segment and in the segment after that, who is Dr. Muhammad Abdurrahman. He'll be joining us very shortly. Stay with us, inshallah. Keep me on the straight path. Your mercy outweighs your wrath. Keep me with your righteous company. Keep me with your righteous company. Keep me on a straight path. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my dear brothers and sisters. Thank you for staying with us and welcome back to our program, The Straight Path. In this segment, inshallah, we're going to begin discussing the idea of judging other people. Something that is so prevalent in the Muslim community and in society in general. But definitely it's something that we deal with inside our Muslim communities, whether we live in uh, Muslim-majority countries or whether we live in Muslim communities in uh, non-Islamic countries. So uh, inshallah, we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be discussing the issue in depth. And would love for you to join us, inshallah, on our phone lines that are going to be shown up on the screen momentarily, inshallah. One of the numbers is 002-0238-555-249. There's also a cell phone number that you see there on the bottom of your screen so that uh, you can get in touch with us. Some people are better able to get in touch with us through our landline. Some other people are, are able to get uh, in touch with us better through our, our cell phone number. So whatever works for you, we're waiting for your calls. We're with you live for about uh, 35 minutes or so, inshallah. So feel free to ring in at any time with any thoughts that you have about this topic, any advice, any questions that you may have. Would love to hear uh, everything and anything from you, inshallah. And I'm glad to be joined, inshallah, in this segment uh, by Dr. Muhammad Abdurrahman, who's back with us on the program after uh, quite a bit of time of being busy. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much for being back with us. I thank you for the invitation and really I feel happy when I come here. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Amin. Barakallahu feek. Um, all right, so we're talking about this idea of judging other people. Why is it? that you know people are so judgmental you know uh, instead of advising one another we end up judging other people either judging them to their face or maybe behind their back bismillah rahman rahim alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi salatu wa salam in the name of allah and uh, all blessings and good feelings and best feelings to our Prophet, peace be upon him, alayhi salatu wassalam, and all the Prophets. <coughs> While I was thinking about that, I thought about one question. Who am I? Actually, I'm a human being. And who is he? He's Allah My creator, time. Allah. So, <laughs> if so, who am I to judge? You know, first judge, in the dictionary you would find it like, uh, mm. <coughs> number one, form an opinion about after a lot of examination. Mm. After a lot of examination. Exactly. Th this is at the beginning. And number two is another meaning. Decides who wins, who is the winner mm. in a competition. Mm. Wallahi, based on that, I said, so who am I to judge? If I judge, I need knowledge. And how much do I know to judge? 
and what's my knowledge in comparison to his, the creator of everything. My creator and the creator is of the heavens and the lands and what's in between. So at the beginning, maybe you are going to say, no, even yourself, can you judge yourself? I mean, can, do you know everything about yourself to be able to say that this is good and this is not very, or do or you see a doctor? You see a doctor. Mm. The doctor can tell you, and sometimes misunderstanding, and sometimes you need an x-ray, and sometimes you need, you need more and more, only to know yourself. What about others? When people just go ahead and say, good, bad, failure, success, mm. and so on. And it can even, it can even uh, you know, transgress even more to calling a person a Muslim uh, kafir. You know, even, though, even though this person is Muslim, you know, on, on, on the outward, is making takfir on people, and, and it's very easy these days. You know, saying, this person is kafir, this person is a disbeliever. Prophet, peace be upon him, didn't do it. Was he, alayhi salatu wasalam, sallallahu alayhi wasalam, peace be upon him and all the prophets, in Mecca, with all these people. But did you hear about something that, that prof our prophet was telling anyone? You, you hathen, you uh, pagan, you worship, and do, and do. Have you ever heard that? I mean, me, I have never heard that. Talking to people, wallahi, I remember this. If we are talking about somebody, and we, we claim that we know, so... Where is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, A'udhu billahi minishtan rajim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ya'lamu khainat al-ayuni wa ma tukhfi sudur. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows this, and he lets me live with all my mistakes, all my faults, all my bad deeds, and Allah is waiting for me to repent. Mm. So Allah didn't judge me. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Walau yu'akhidhu Allahu al-nasa bi dhulmihim, ma tarak alayha min dabbah, if, if people make a mistake, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets us with that mistake, and may Allah forbid that to all of us, we don't go to paradise, we go to the other side. What, what were the people going to do? Was there going to be any meaning of repentance? What if you tell somebody you are going here and there? Who told you that? Who gave you the right to do so? Mm -hmm. So that's why I go back to the question. Who am I to judge? Yeah, and when we talk about especially this issue that's become... Uh, you know, increasingly prevalent in our in our Muslim communities, this issue of takfir. Uh, it's not a. Pr uh, there is the concept of takfir in Islam, but it's not you know uh, practiced by just any normal person. It's, it's practiced by a scholar, you know, or or someone like that. Not just by anybody you know that you see on the street. <coughs> oh, this person, I'm not going to listen to this person because he's a kafir. Or this person, very easy to say, this person is uh, does bid'ah. Or you know what I mean. Uh, it, it like, and then we we start judging people, and we start saying, okay, this person is part of this group, or this person is part of this group, or uh, you know, this person is not following uh, the same madhab as I'm following, therefore he's on the wrong path, and I'm on the right path, and and then we become so judgmental of other people that we forget about our own selves. Imagine that, around like in 2004. 2005, I don't remember. I was getting back from the hospital. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah, at that time it was very difficult, but Alhamdulillah became better. The point. Uh, I and, and my wife, she was with me, no, my brother, my uh, big brother, were on a taxi. Imagine what the taxi driver told me. Mm. He excused me. Is it possible to play Amr Khalid's tape? I wondered, why is the question? I told him, of course, I love this person very much. He is someone who calls for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet, uh, uh, prophet's work, and he is a nice person. Then I asked him, why do you ask me that question? He told me the other day, somebody was here, and I was playing Sheikh Amr Khalid. He told me, no, don't play this. Judgmental. Imagine, not for a layman, for, for someone like, like Sheikh Amr Khalid. Of course, he's a good man and we don't say anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows this. But I mean, excuse me to play this, not to play a song, not to play something bad, but, but for this point. And one time I heard about Dr. Amr Khalid, doctor, of course, after the PhD. But he is better even with doctor or without a doctor. We make mistakes, right? To err is human. 
So why do people say, ah, look at the mistake, look at the mistake, look at the mistake. What does he talk about? Does he talk about Quran? Yes. Sunnah? Hadith? Yes. So what would you like to have? I mean, being judgmental is impossible. Mainly, number one, who are you? Number, one, number two, what do you know about that person? Number three, have you got the same kind of learning he received? Number four, can you talk like him? Number five, can you convince people what he's doing? Number six, he went to the clubs 10, 12 years ago, and he addressed people that sheikhs, many sheikhs couldn't reach, and many people with the help of Allah then, and after that, with his attempts, got back to Islam. I don't say got back to Islam, got back to deen. They are Muslims. Nobody can deny you of Islam. Nobody can tell you you are a pagan or you are a heathen. You are not a believer. Who gave the, you the right or the authority to, to do that? Nobody did that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only knows what's inside. You don't know. Wallahi, I remember I was going to start with this. Peace be upon him, alayhi salatu wasalam, said that, that if you see a man getting to the mosque regularly, you are a witness that this person is a true believer. You see that if the Prophet talks about this, and he doesn't talk about the inside, who are you to talk about something the Prophet, the prophet didn't talk about? So I mean, I mean, we, not, I, I, I would accuse myself first before I, I talk about others. We need to, to look at ourselves first. And number two, we need to think about a word before saying it. Because you know uh, the Prophet on the way to uh, uh, in Al-Isra, I guess, um, or in Al-Mi'raj. Uh, Before we take this story, can we take this call? Oh, we sure. have a call yeah, from sure. my brother Abu Abdurrahman uh, from the UK. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Bro brothers, if you, if you can uh, hire, hire your voice just a bit, please. It's, uh, please, I have a question regarding the topic. Please, go ahead, brother. Um, the question is, if I refuse to borrow my laptop to my friend, because the first time I gave him, he used it for haram purpose. Is this judging him as bad? Oh, oh, he uses his laptop for haram purposes. So you're saying I don't yeah. want to use so, it, right? So I don't want to give him again to use it. Is this Please judging don't. him as a <laughs> bad person? Okay, okay. The doctor heard your question. He'll answer, inshallah. Well, uh, <coughs> Brother Abdullah, Abdurrahman, please don't. Brother Abu Abdurrahman. Hmm. Abu Abdurrahman. Abu Abdurrahman, please don't. I mean, we cannot allow ourselves to allow somebody to use me as a path to, to hell. I mean, we want to give, and we want to help, and we want support. And Islam calls us and orders us to do this as possible. Uh, um, Prophet, peace be upon him, said this. So uh, uh, you are not going to be a true believer. Thank you very much for reminding me. Um, uh, you are not a true believer until you love what you love for yourself, the same for your brother. Mm -hmm. And brother, he is not brother uh, in my family, yeah. in the big family, the Islam family. So you don't love that this person uses your laptop or any laptop for doing something haram against deen, against religion. So you, you are not going to give it to them. And even if you lose that kind of friendship, you, you are not talking harshly, but you are talking nicely. But if people insist, well, thank you very much. I cannot help you. Help. And I think the prophetic hadith tell, tells this, um, that, that uh, that person who uh, does something nice and uh, people follow him, uh, he is taking uh, the, the, the ajr, uh, the, the, the reward of that thing. And their rewards till the doomsday without belittling any of theirs. And the same thing for the other people who is a sinful person. Because I'm not sinful, but I give somebody something to be sinful. And the ayah, we, we cannot sustain ours. So can we sustain others? I think so. Can you translate the ayah for us? Uh, well, uh, the ayah that you just mentioned, can you translate it? Um, 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 when people at the dooms, they may, may Allah forbid that to all of us, they come with their mistakes, and not only their mistakes, and the followers' mistakes as well. Because mm. you know, it's just either plus or minus. When you get them, and actually still, they need, um, I mean, you know the al-muflis, um, 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 the broker, hadith. When he is that one who, uh, who just gets with the, the bankrupt person. The bankrupt person. Yeah. 
Um, and the broker as well. The broker is somebody who doesn't have any kind of money. Uh, so it's not our kind of money because when the Prophet told them about that, uh, the companions, he told them, they told him that, mm. well, there's that person who doesn't have any money and doesn't have any furniture or anything. Mm. When Prophet said, Wallahi, this is not. It's the person who comes with prayers, with uh, hajj, with uh, zakah, but he comes and he insulted this and did that and did that. Mm. So what, what, what is the measurement there? Money? You tell me, no, it's the idea. You did well, you get good deeds, hasanat. You did bad, you get bad deeds. This is for yourself. Mm. But for others, you do well with them, so you get the same thing. Increasing hasnat balance sheet. Mm. You do negative, we have the same. And later on, may Allah forbid that to all of us. Maybe you are a good person, but you made bad things with other people. So no, brother Abu Abdul Rahman. Never do that. Don't help people to do something bad. Zakallah khair. No, no, yeah. uh, my dear brothers and sisters, inshallah, we are going to uh, take a break, inshallah. And then when we come back, we're going to still continue talking about judging other people. This is a very important subject that I think a lot of us fall into. And it's really a, a big sin, you know, to be putting yourself uh, in the situation where you make yourself the judge when uh, you know you should really be judging yourself instead of judging other people we'll talk more about this inshallah and we'll talk more also about uh, judging other people in terms of the worldly perspective not only in terms of deen we'll take a look at some reports also when we come back from this break inshallah keep me on the straight path your mercy out of ways your keep me with your righteous company Keep me on a straight path. Mercy out of ways your Keep me with your righteous company. Keep me on a straight path. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back, my dear brothers and sisters, to the final segment here this evening of our program, The Straight Path. Thank you so much for being with us here this evening. We hope that this program is of benefit. We are really reminding ourselves of a very important subject and a very important topic, which is judging others and how we should be way less judgmental of other people and focus way more on judging ourselves before we are judged on the Day of Judgment. That is a lot of judgment and judging and all these types of things in one sentence. Uh, I guess it all relates to, uh, to the topic. Uh, Dr. Muhammad, when we talk about judging other people, we're talking about both in terms of uh, the deen, as, as we mentioned, and also in terms of the dunya. How can a person be judgmental of other people when it comes to the dunya as well? Well, it's the idea of the look to the word judge first. But, but just one thing I wanted to show because before I come here, yeah. just they helped me at home, my wife, and told me, look at this. Yeah. This one, I hope it's... Inshallah, they'll get it for you. <laughs> if you yeah, can that's just very uh, good. But I mean the look at this. When you talk about being judgmental yeah. or okay. being uh, helpful, we're going to have it in uh, later on. But that's this not. is the idea, to judge and hear the flower doesn't feel that there's a judge. Uh -huh. It feels that this is to prevent me from the sun, from rain, and so on. Mm. But the little girl's doing it on, uh, actually, uh, in a nice way. She doesn't feel at all that this is negative to it. She feels that this is protect. Yeah, she's trying to protect, uh, protect the flower. But the flower doesn't understand this. Yeah. So actually, to judge, judge itself, no, we don't judge. We may show something, mm. we may feel something, we may be polite to, I tell you something. I, when I started learning English at college, one of my professors told me that when people travel to London, um, Londoners and rich people ask him first, do you mind if I correct you? And if they say, no, I don't mind at all, they go ahead, talk and correct that person. But if the person said, yes, I mind, they leave them talk because they can understand. But you know, it's the category, category of your talk. To are you educated or uneducated? These are foreigners. And maybe some of them are Muslims, many of them are not. But they understand the meaning of limits. That you, you are free, but you have limits. And I am free as well. So the idea of judging people and looking at other people and say this person is rich, he must be bad. And mm. this person is, has more money, so he must be bad. Mm. And I don't have this. Well, again to the same point. Who am I? Am I the creator 
Or am I the person who is created? Definitely the person who is created, yeah. So, uh, when talking about something like this, even uh, maybe the first point was more dangerous, which is uh, telling people who is a believer and who is not. And this one is also dangerous, because if people do like this, he is rich and I am not. So, are you arguing with that person or with him? Are you saying that, may Allah forbid that to him, Hasha lillah, mm. he is not like that. You know better than him. Mm. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna Allah huwa al-Razzaqu dhul quwati al-Mateen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the oft giver, the most giver. And actually he gives because he has everything. So who are you to reject that or to object to that or to, and where is the word, Thank you very much. Where is the word? Alhamdulillah. All thanks go to you. And that's why when we talk about this, that people are looking at others and say, why and why not? Why does he have a flat and I'm, I don't have a flat? Why, why, why? What I learned when I was young and until now is that when we look at religion, at deen, we look at people who are higher than me. And I say, where am I? Am I doing the same? Am I having... Uh, Qiyam Lil staying at night and, and worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praying at night and so on. Mm. Uh, he has hajj. Do I have hajj? And so on. Uh, when you look at people who have money, who do we look at? People who are poorer. Who, people who don't have, alhamdulillah, I eat three times a day. Some people have only one meal. That's true. And some people don't have any meal. So uh, let's look first at, at who we are, number one, wallahi. And number two, at the blessings. Here is the ayah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the Nahl Surah, uh, the 18th ayah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Actually, the, the ayah goes like, uh, if even you think about counting the blessings and gifts that you were given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will not be able to do this. Because they are countless. And then what is the end of the ayah? Of course Allah is the oft giver mm. and the most merciful. So can we compare this to that? Yeah. When the beginning is, if, if you count, and actually just relating to Arabic, I remember Sheikh Sharawi for that one, he was talk about uh, the language here. If you count, so in ta'uddu, this means that it's going to be a plural, mm. ni'am, blessings. But actually, Ni'mat Allah. One, one. And it's coming like indefinite. Telling you that even when you talk about ni'mah, but why do we have the plural with the singular? Let's have an example. And we talk about the brain as a blessing and a gift from Allah. The brain is ni'mah, mm. one gift. But inside the brain there are blessings. Mm. And that's why ta'uddu, you count things. And, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions oh. one blessing. And the eye and the ear and so on. You, you know one time, I, I got a piece of information about that 10 years ago, that in order to copy the ear, they had a very tall building like, like a, a floor for an ear. Mm. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had this one in that place as exactly better than any receiver that you have up the mm. roof and then you have a dish and then receiver, mm. not to receive a channel. But we receive everything from, from 32 the at it the directions. Mm. Subhanallah. But, but of course, uh, there are other creatures that receive this from 132 at uh, directions. Subhanallah. You see that? Zakallah khair. Warakallah yeah, um, We have this report, inshallah, by Sheikh Zahir Mahmoud talking about judging others. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. When we come back, inshallah, we'll share with you our weekly poll that we took regarding this subject. Stay with us, inshallah. Straight back, your mercy out of ways your Keep me with your righteous company. Keep me on a straight path. People have become very superficial how they view other people. So they shed, so they judge you not upon your actions. They don't judge you upon you know what kind of character you are. They judge you by materialistic means. What car that you drive. You know, where you live, how good you're looking you are. I mean, Allah created man, man didn't choose. 
and you see people, you know, drive big cars, have big bank balances, as though he's going to share that money with you. You know, a guy has a big car, and all of a sudden he has friends that he never knew about. I mean, what, what does that say about human beings? What, you're ready to suck up to a person because of a piece of metal? But today we judge people, you know, by the clothes that they wear. By the clothes that they wear. I mean, Prada watch. Prada shoes, Cartier watch. Is this what Muslims have come down to? If you want to judge people by their looks or by the clothes that they wear, then let me tell you when the Prophet ﷺ left this dunya, he had patches upon his clothes. Eleven patches. When Abu Bakr who left this dunya, he had 14 patches upon his clothes. I mean, is this what Muslims have come down to? There was a time where people were judged upon their character. If Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu had judged Bilal upon the color of his skin and his status in society, he would have never freed him. But he judged him by his khayr, he judged him by his taqwa. And this is why when he saw Bilal radiallahu anhu being persecuted, he went to Umayyah and he said, Umayyah, sell me Bilal. And Umayyah said, yeah, I'll sell him to you because you're the one who corrupted him. And he said, how much? And he said, 10 gold coins. And Abu Bakr who went home and he bought 10 gold coins and he gave it to Umayyah. And Umayyah began to laugh. And Abu Bakr said, Umayyah, what's making you laugh? He said, the reason that I'm laughing is that if you had haggled with me, if you had haggled with me and you had offered me one gold coin, I would have sent, sold Bilal to you for one gold coin. And Abu Bakr said, I swear by Allah, Umayyah, if you haggled with me and asked me for a hundred gold coins for Bilal, I would have given you a hundred gold coins because Bilal was worth it. Give me on the straight path, your mercy outweighs your wrath. Keep me with your righteous company. Give me on the straight Subhanallah, it's really, really, really amazing, my dear brothers and sisters, when we see what the Sahaba did and how they acted on the subject of judging other people. SubhanAllah, they weren't judgmental. They were always, uh, you know, for the most part, as much as, as they could. Of course, you know, some people made some mistakes here and there. But as a whole, Sahabis, they judged each other based on character, not based on looks and these types of things as we talked. And, you know, they always gave the benefit of doubt. Uh, to people instead of being just simply judgmental in the negative sense of the word as, as we said. All right, my dear brothers and sisters, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our weekly poll. Uh, the question that we asked you on Facebook as you see on your screen, why do we often judge others? What is the reason that we judge other people? 60% um, of you said arrogance is really the reason and 40% said low self-esteem. Zakum khairan for your participation uh, on our weekly Facebook poll. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. Uh, Dr. Muhammad, when you see the results of this poll, 60% of brothers and sisters said arrogance is really the main reason that we judge other people, either in terms of deen or dunya. 40% uh, said uh, our own low self-esteem. Don't we have another one which is misunderstanding? I guess so, yeah. <laughs> but I mean because actually some people are not arrogant. But still they, uh, they mock people and they, they laugh at people and they judge people negatively and, and, yeah. and. By the way, this poll, when we asked this poll, we asked brothers and sisters to judge themselves. You exactly. Know? <laughs> Not to say, yeah. why do other people, no, but why do we, you mm. know, like often judge other people? So we kind of like brought it to our own selves. Number one, I can't see anything that makes me an arrogant person. Anything. Uh, just a couple of, uh, a couple of weeks. I was sitting with my, my professor, Dr. Shukhim Gahid, one time in the morning when he met me, he told me that, Muhammad, uh, uh, should we be arrogant for anything? Nothing is ours. Wallahi, he said this, when really I looked at everything, information, knowledge, position, life, parts of the body, even jackets, even anything, we don't own anything in this world. We own his satisfaction only. And this is what we see. That's why for arrogance, yeah, some people do it for arrogance, you see. Even in learning, in learning, some people only when they learn something, 
this reminds me of what happened this term. In the past, it used to be like when you, when you give a praise to a student, they used to do what? To be humble and look down and, oh, no, that's not me. Mm. Ab about this term, more than one person, I give something like very good, excellent, and so on. You know what is the response? <laughs> As if showing people what, that's me. But, but this is the main idea. But action number two about low self-esteem, mm. I totally agree with that. Um, no, in Arabic they say this, uh, that if you have something wrong, you would like to call the other people to be wrong so that you feel that you are equal. Mm. Uh, but I mean, this is the main <laughs> thing we are talking <laughs> about. And actually, um, 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 if we want to talk about something to all people, I just need uh, to tell myself something yes. and to tell all people the same thing. We yes. need to... Because we only have about a minute left, so give us, give us this yeah. last... Uh, uh, number one, we need to accept ourselves at first because this shows that some people don't accept themselves. Mm -hmm. An arrogant person doesn't accept himself. He, he lays more uh, focus on others, not himself. Definitely. Maybe he's the one who needs to be. And number two, to accept others as they are. Mm. Uh, we don't, uh, we are not a uh, hairdresser that I'm going to form a person like I like. No, we accept people as they are. And number three, and this is the most important thing I think, we, we need to talk to people as equal. Mm. Any learning you have or any knowledge, Allah gave you, you don't have a hand in that. Uh, any deen, you don't have a hand in that. Any money, you don't have in that. People understand and learn like this. If we feel that we are the same, and I am talking like I love you, and I'm talking out of help, not out of negative criticism, people accept that. If people say that you are not acting like a sheikh of Islam, you are, not a, you are a Muslim, talking to a Muslim, or talking to any other person, non-Muslim, they feel that you are saying something right. You are not forcing people to, say, to do the same. Um, Zakallah Barakallah Always a great pleasure to uh, talk with you and to hear your uh, opinions and your it's thoughts. It's my pleasure, actually, Wallahi, that Barakallah. I felt very happy, really, when I came and I said, oh, good old days. <laughs> Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Barakallah Zakallah My dear brothers and sisters, thank you so much for being with us here this evening. I hope tonight's episode was a benefit. We should really be less judgmental of other people and more judgmental of Can ourselves. Yeah, go ahead. I have only a second. Yeah. Wallahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. It occurred to me to say like this. Allahumma ya Rabb, ij'al al-dunya tahta aqdamina, waj'al al-akhirata fi qulubina. Fa inna la namliku min anfusina shay'an, wa anta ala kulli shay'in qadir. Farhamna warham dhafana, wa inna na'udhu bikim churu ya anfusina. We say ati amrina. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please accept us in paradise and have us in the best in the firdaus with the, with the prophets and the believers and the uh, people who are going to witness that you are Allah and the Prophet is be, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and وصلي اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بريء صلى الله عليه وسلم بارك الله فيك my dear brothers and sisters in Islam thank you so much for being with us here we thank Dr Muhammad Abdul Rahman for all his great advice and I thank you very much for that thank you Allah Muhammad Hassan Jaza الله يبارك فيك uh, inshallah we'll see you again next week بإذن الله تعالى at 9 p.m. مكة time Let's be less judgmental of other people, more judgmental of ourselves. And I really believe that it, that is the path of Islam and that is the path to happiness both in this life and in Jannah bi idnillah ta'ala. Jazakum Allah khairan. Have a good evening. Enjoy the rest of your weekends. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Every day for my guidance, Lord, cause you're the one I totally rely on. Ooh, ooh, ah, 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 ooh, ooh, ah, ah, ah. Every day I'm praying for my guidance, Lord. Cause you're the one I totally rely on Cause people change like the seasons But you, you have never let me down You're always with me as you, Allah. Oh Lord, keep me on the straight path I'm certain that this world won't last Keep me with your righteous company 
Keep me on the straight path. You 